Hello once again. For my class web, I want to uh, take this opportunity and explain one question that was done in one of the past exams that was done in the KCP for the year 2010. Now, this question required the candidate to arrange fractions uh, from the smallest to the largest. I want to state that this question has always been repeated in most of the exams. So it is very necessary for the candidate to take note of this question as I explain. Now, the fractions that you are given here are 3 over 7, 2 over 5, 5 over 8 and 1 over 2. This time, they are the fractions are supposed to be arranged from the smallest to the largest. You will find in some cases whereby the examiner will use the word either ascending or descending. If the fractions are going to be arranged in the ascending order, like now in this case, you start with the smallest fraction and you add with the largest uh, fraction. If it is going to be the vice versa, whereby the fractions are to be arranged in the descending order, you start from the largest and then you add with the smallest. So as I do, or rather as I explain this example, you need to realize that although we are going to arrange the fractions from the smallest to the largest, if it will be the largest to the smallest, you will do the opposite. And once you are given fractions like this, look at the denominators. Like now in this case, the denominators are 7, 5, 8, and 2. To be able to do this, we shall look for the LCM of these four denominators here. And to get the LCM of these four denominators here, we shall use the method of prime factorization, which will help us to get the LCM of the denominators 7, 5, 8, eight and two and to do that we shall require a table and on this table we shall put on this first box there seven we write five in the second box rather in the third box because the first one here we are going to leave it empty uh, then we write eight there and we write two there why did we leave this first box here empty it is because in prime factorization we shall have to look for a prime number that is capable of dividing any of these numbers that we have here we have seven five eight and two now the prime factor that can be picked in this case and remember a prime factor is a number that has got only two devices only two devices that is one and itself now if you take two for example it is possible to divide eight by two to get four it is possible to divide two by two to get one but seven cannot be divided by two and if you do, it is going to give us a remainder, which we do not want. Again, 5 will also give us a remainder. We want only a prime number that will divide any of these numbers until it ends. So, like now in this case, if you take 7, you divide by 2. And we have already said it is going to give us a remainder. So, what you do, write 7 there. Write 5 there, again, because it cannot be divided by 2. But 8 divided by 2, it is 4, which you write below 8 and 2 divided by 2 it is 1 which you write below uh, 2 so this one here have added because it has given us 1 so you are left with only three numbers that is 7 5 and 4 again look for another prime number that can divide any of these numbers that we have here if you take 2 which you write down there two we have already said that it cannot divide uh, it cannot be divided by 7 because it would give us a remainder. So what you do, just drop that 7 there. Repeat the same for 5. But for uh, once it is divided by 2, you, it will give us 2, which you write uh, below 4. And since this one added, we shall just drop 1 there. So again, we've got three numbers. And since we've got a 2 here, let us divide uh, these numbers there by, uh, by prime number 2. But because we have already realized that 7 cannot be divided by 2, just drop it, drop it down there. Drop 5 there. But 2 divided by 2, that will give us 1. And so the last one here, you just drop 1 there. So we've got 5 and seven remember five and seven these are prime numbers 
they themselves are prime numbers. So actually, if you take one of them like 7, you divide by 7, you'll get 1. But since 5 cannot be divided by 7, just drop 5. Below there, drop 1, drop the other one there. So with only 5, so you only need 5 there, but uh, below here, you just require to put 1, but 5 divided by 5, you just get 1, drop 1 there, drop the other one there. Look at what has happened. All these numbers now have added because they have given us 1, 1, 1. So our prime uh, numbers that can uh, divide um, uh, these denominators here are 2, 2, 2, 7, and 5. Now, if you multiply these prime numbers here, they should be able to give you the least common multiple of these four numbers there. So, if you multiply uh, these prime numbers there, that is 2 times 2 times 2 times 7 times 5, you get 280. So, 280 is the LCM uh, of these four numbers. Now, what are we going to do with this LCM here? We shall use the 280 and multiply by each of these uh, fractions here. Like, for example, you take 3 over 7, you multiply by 280. Take 2 over 5, multiply by 280. Repeat the same for the other fraction. Repeat the same for the other fraction. And once you do that, whatever product you are going to get for each of these fractions will be able to determine which is the largest fraction, which is the smallest fraction. And from there, you'll now be able to arrange those fractions in, uh, from the smallest to the largest. Let us begin by taking... Uh, by taking 3 over 7. If you take 3 over 7, if you take 3 over 7, you multiply by 280, you multiply by 280, uh, you will get uh, 280 if you divide by 7, that will give us 40. 40 multiplied by 3, you get 120. You get 120. Now, this is what we are saying, that the product of each of these fractions will be able to determine the size of every fraction. Let us pick another one that is like, for example, 2 over 5. 2 over 5, uh, we divide by 280. And once you take 280 and uh, you divide by 5, you get 56. 280 there, another 5 divided by 5, you get 1. So 2 multiplied by, uh, by 56 is 112. Now let us pick the other one, that is 5 over 8. And again, we multiply by our LCM. And once we simplify in the same, same way, you'll be able to get uh, 8 divided by 8 is 1. And 280, you divide by 8, you'll get 35. Which once you multiply by 5, you get 175. And finally, you take a half, multiply by 280. Again, once you simplify, you should get uh, 1 times 40, which will give us uh, 140. Look at this product that we have here. That is 120, 112, 175, and 140. So, you will realize that 2 over 5 is giving us 112, and... 3 over 7 is giving us 120. The other one, that is half, will give us 140. And finally, 5 over 8 will give us um, 175. This product here now will determine which is the largest fraction, which is the smallest fraction. So, if you are now going to arrange these fractions in the, uh, in the ascending order, you should therefore begin with 2 over 5. Then you go to 3 over 7, you go to a half, go to 5 over 8. And if you go back now to the choice, 2 over 5, we have it there. 3 uh, over 7, which is uh, taking the second position. A half will take the third position. And 5 over 8 will take the fourth position. And it is therefore the largest fraction. So this is the smallest that is the largest. So in, uh, according to this uh, choice here B, that could have been a better choice for that question. You can continue subscribing to this channel so that you continue getting more and more worked out examples. Thank you very much.